Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm looking forward to bringing you this interview with new driver, Paul Pintor. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber car program. So if you're tired of driving the car you're in right now, you might want to try something new and different, in which case you should definitely check out the Fair for Uber car program. I used to drive a 2013 Prius. Then I started to use the Fair program and I got a really clean and spacious Hyundai Elantra, the great stereo system for $195 per week plus taxes. It was awesome to listen to John Coltrane's A Love Supreme in that car. Now, that price includes everything, rideshare insurance, and unlimited miles. And since Fair partners with Uber, you can earn a very strong bonus for a relatively low number of trips and basically cover the cost of the car. This program's available in California for now, but there are other programs all across the country. So check the Fair website for the prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out. Doesn't get much better than that. Download the Fair app and get a car today. It's a great program. Be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's RSG100. So we get credit for sending you there. All right. All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Uber Eats, Caviar. All of you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of the gig economy, welcome. I am Jay Crater, and this is my podcast. Welcome to the show. Let's enter the dojo. All right. My guest today is Paul Pintor. Paul Pintor is a new driver. He's been driving for about three weeks, and we wanted to bring him on because he contacted us, and he's got kind of an interesting story. He's got a big personality. And after three weeks, he's got some really good information uh, to share about his driving experience down there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So let's jump in. I think you're going to enjoy this guy. He's a lot of fun. I certainly enjoy talking to him. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, the big energy, big personality, big Texas, Mr. Paul Pintor. All right, Dojo Nation, we have got a great guest today. We got Mr. Paul Pintor. Paul is a new driver, all right? So I've had a lot of seasoned drivers. I think the only really new driver I had was my daughter, and that was that was pretty cool. But that was a while ago. So in today's um, environment, where there's a lot of negative, negative news about, you know, driving, uh, we found a guy who has just started driving in the Dallas market. He contacted ride, ride share, uh, the rideshare guy, and he said, uh, Paul Pintor here. I wanted to reach out and introduce myself. Yesterday was my first day, and I pegged $251.47 blindfolded. I did not know how to turn the Uber or drive on <laughs> app. Nothing. Uh, said it would be nice to have a short conversation, a Zoom conference or something. So here he reached out to me and said, uh, let's talk to this guy. He's pretty serious about driving, and it probably would be a real benefit to uh, to our audience. So Mr. Paul Pinter, welcome to the dojo. Hi, how you doing? Thank you for having me on board. Yeah, it's great. Great. So, uh, okay, so how long has it been now? How long have you been driving? I actually started on September 1st, All right. um, and as of Sunday... It was a, my first full three weeks. That's ramp up period, mm -hmm. getting everything in the vehicle going, new phone, mm -hmm. new new car seat covers, floor mats, you know, seeing the CPA, getting all the ramp up and everything. I've been at it three weeks. All right. Great, great, great. So, uh, great. And and uh, what what made you decide you wanted to become a driver? You know, when there, there there has been a lot of negative stuff out there about driving. You know, there's this big fight in California about being called an independent contractor or being a, an employee. Um, yeah. What? What? Uh, so tell us, tell us just a little bit about yourself and, and where you are in life that you decided to become a driver. 
Well, um, I'm 55 years old. I just turned 55 on September 9th. Um, and, you know, I was in the process or I was doing some in-home appointments and every night on the way in, um, I've been listening to KRLD News Radio 1080 and Dave Ramsey was on there, um, the deck guy, talking about, you know, he was, he was visiting with um, couples, a married couple, and he was telling them, look, you know, you got to get out of debt. You got to do something. Um, he said, you know, these Uber guys out there, these drivers that are doing ride shares, he said, look, he said, there's, there's some of them out there that are re- literally cracking the code. Um, he said, I don't know what they're doing, but he said, you know, it's something that you can use your vehicle, you know, and in the evenings on the weekend, just sock away a little bit of money to help pay off debt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every time I get in an Uber or a limo, I've always asked people, you know, how long have you been doing it? What do you think about it? You know? Right. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I was in transition from one career to the next, you know, my, the, the last, since 1986, the majority of my career has been investment banking, you mm-hmm. know, capital raise per se. Right. Um, and, you know, since, you know, I, I really just wanted to get out of it. Uh, we relocated to the Fort Worth area, which, which is our hometown. Nice. My wife's to help take care of her father, who's 86. And I told my wife, I said, you know, life's about handshakes and relationships. Okay. And if there's anywhere that you're going to have a lot of handshakes and you never know who's going to get in your car from all walks of life, it's driving, doing ride share. That's right. That's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. You never, you, you ne- know that for yeah. anyone. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I've had all walks of life in three weeks in my vehicle. Yeah. I mean, just the other day at the TCU SMU game, I had, Judge Jerry Means, he's a federal judge, an SMU alumni in the front seat of my car, you know, which yeah. is a big upset. TCU got beat by SMU, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is a major upset. So, um, you right. know, uh, okay. for, so, me, yeah. for me, it's a way to make some additional income, um, meet people, lock arms with people, maybe push me into my next 30 year career. Got it. And, um, the drive share was something I can, I can do it on my terms. It's all about making it rain for others. And if you have the wherewithal on how to make it rain for others, it opens the door for a lot of opportunities. So I thought, why not? I had a brand new car. Um, I was set up to do it and uh, I got a 2020 Kia. So, um, I put 6,000 miles on it in three weeks and, um, uh, you know, it's been it's been very good. It's been it's good. been lucrative. It's good work, but it's lucrative. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're a 55 year old guy. So you're about the same age I was when I started, and uh, you kind of yeah you're kind of at a crossroads of some sort. Uh, there's a lot of freedom and flexibility in this driving thing, and uh, yeah, I did look at it like uh, I'm going to meet a lot of people, but. Um, I, I, I did find that I enjoyed, you know, talking to certain people, you know, that got in my car and, and that was very, sure. very stimulating. And I just always loved driving. So for me, it, that, that was kind of a natural thing. Okay, great. So we kind of got the table set there. So cracking the code. So you've had three weeks to work on cracking the code. Um, uh, what's, what's been the biggest challenge for you so far, would you say, in cracking the code? The biggest challenge I would say is is really trying to I, I use an app which I think a lot of people use. Um uh, it helps uh grid wise. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I'm not really a airport um guy. I like the airport because you can go into the airport and it'll take you out to certain areas, but sometimes it'll displace you. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. You know, we, we kind of touched on it the other day about making, about working events mm-hmm. and you got to be careful about working events because if you get sucked into an event at 12 cents a minute, you're not making money sitting in your vehicle. Right. Uh, right. 
the way you make money if you're sitting in your vehicle is you got to have your vehicle set up with condiments, uh, candy, crackers, cookies, uh, pop tarts, uh, ice cold water. I've got it all. I average about probably 12 cents per item. I've got about 15 different kinds of condiments that I give away as part of the venue. And about five out of 50 might take you up on it. Uh-huh. Uh, so the expense is a minimum. But if you're in traffic and you're sitting and you've got all these refreshments for everybody, then you're making money on a tip like Jerry Means. Judge Jerry Means, because we were sitting in TCU traffic, you know, he gave me a $20 tip. Yeah, yeah, Cash. yeah. So, you know. So, okay, so, all right, so slow down. So, all right, so for you, part of cracking the code has been uh, learning learning how to manage the airport, learning how to manage events, and um, and you're a big believer in, in uh, having things in your car for the passengers. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and, and, and you think that has made a, a big impact on your tips? More than anything, getting out and opening the door and serving – the customer like it was a limousine okay so <laughs> okay all right so that's a new one that's great so um so when your passengers walk towards the car you get out of the car and open the door for them yes that's what you're saying wow i've never even thought about that that's that's kind of a that's something to uh to try i wonder i wonder how that would impact tips how people would well, feel it, uh, saturday night I had a gentleman open up the door for his wife and he took off his hat and he's like, wow, he tore a hundred dollar bill in half and gave me half of it. He said, look, this is the first half. Okay. Later on, I want you to come pick me up and I'm going to give you the second half. Is that right? I respect the man that opens the door for my wife. Uh, I ended up making $120 with that one client just on tips and cash. Huh? Huh? All right, all right. Listen to that rideshare dojo. There's a rideshare nation. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty good. That's uh, I I I never even thought about that. But uh, you you thought of that because you've had uh, that experience. Yeah, when you take when you take a limo, uh, they tend to do that for you, right? Yeah. Well, I, I thought this was a limo. Yeah. Right. Sure. Right. 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 So. Um, <laughs> Have have you um have you kind of kept track of like how much money you're earning per hour and has it increased week to week as you learn learn these things? Well, on the hour basis, I really haven't. There, there's two hours. There's one hour that from the time that you get in the vehicle to the time you come home, right? And then there's the hour that you have the customer in the vehicle. Yeah, well, I, 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 yeah, I look at how how many hours you actually are are working. So, right. so when I, I mean, when I, yeah, when I start my day, I I would get gas in my car, get some coffee, and then turn my app on, and then my app would just stay on until I would stop, you know, stop at the end of my shift. Um, so yeah, so for me, it's yeah, it's basically when the app's on, um, which is when I'm doing, you know, doing the work. Um, well, I'm running both apps. Yeah, right. I know it can get a little confusing then. Then you got to just look at the clock and say, all right, I started at, you know, I start at five in the morning and I finish at 11. So that's six hours. Yeah. Yeah. I usually run 14 to 15 hours. Whenever my Uber cashes out on me and I'm at my limit, oh, then yeah. I, you know, I will jump on the lift to get me back home. I see. Because really, after 12 hours of being on Uber, yeah. on and off, yeah. It's about a 14 hour period. You know, by then you're tired. Oh yeah. Oh I mean, my god. I Yeah. I I I'm I'm good for about at the most 8 at this point. I could not I I'm sure I could do it, but I found when I was when I was doing full-time driving and I would have, you know, one week I I, I drove like 90 hours and um I would get really tired at the end of a shift so much that it, I didn't feel like I was quite safe. You know, I, I, I was not, I couldn't be as attentive as I was when I would first start driving in the morning. Do you find you yeah, get, you're, you're 100% correct. So, yeah. 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 You um, got to be careful with that. That's why they shut it off after what, 12 or 14 hours. 
Well, that's one of the things that I haven't cracked the code on is how to increase my wages with less miles and less hours. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, the even though Lyft and Uber have lowered the per mile rate, you're still going to make the most money driving at 60 to 70 miles per hour on the freeway. So the mo- the more of your time you can spend driving on the freeway at 60 to 70 miles an hour with a passenger in your car, that's that's how you're going to get your, your per hour rate up. That's the only way you're going to get wow. your, your per hour rate up. And that really, from what I found out, is that those are going to be the the people that are going from downtown to the airport or from the airport out to Frisco. Now, those are the 20 plus mile trips. Yes. That majority are coming from the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those, those are the, the long trips. So, um, so typically the, the, the morning rush hour and the afternoon rush hour are good for getting a lot of short trips, you know, to get your numbers up if you're going to work towards a bonus. But then during the middle of the day and definitely on the weekends up until about noon, uh, those are when when you want to get those long trips. That's when those destination filters can come in handy because you can set your destination for some some place that's, you know, 30 30 miles away and only get people going in that direction. And you're more likely on the weekends to get to get people going on those longer trips because they're going to see friends. You know, they're not going to work. They're they're being more social. Yeah, but that's the only way you're going to increase your per hour. That and 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 getting more tips, you know, getting more tips and earning earning bigger bonuses. But in terms of driving, you want to be driving on the freeway at 80 miles an hour. That's how you get get it up the highest. All right, great. What, was, go ahead. I was looking at my tips. Yeah, and um, across the board. On Uber, I did thirty two ninety five on the app and eight hundred twenty one dollars in cash tips. And my cash tips actually is about twenty four point nine percent of my gross on the app. You know, there's there's tips in the app, right? But uh, over and above the tips on the app, um, I did thirty two ninety five plus eight twenty one. And tips on Uber, uh-huh. and then on Lyft, I've only done three hundred eighty-five dollars. Um, I've used Lyft as a secondary. Um, so what? What? What made you decide to to uh, to focus on Uber? Is it? Uh, did you get advised that it's just going to be? It was busier. That it's a more active uh, company there. Um, you know, I don't know. I, you know, Uber is Uber's the Uber. You know, yeah, I mean, when you think of Uber, everybody thinks, well, Uber and Lyft, it's ride share. Um, you know, really, Lyft was something, you know, secondary to me. I see. I, I did Lyft because you guys recommend that we should run both. But what happened was I ran out. I was all the way out 70 miles from my residence. And I had to come back without on a deadhead because I ran out of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can use. Then I knew. Then I, I had to get Lyft. That way, I could at least get back home and make money on the way back home. Right. Right. Um, exactly. But so- every time I'm every time I'm running both of them simultaneously, it's notorious that that Uber is always the one hitting. Yeah, I think in most in most markets that's the case because Uber's been there the longest. Yeah, they were the first to market, and. Um, yeah, I think it's like two thirds to one third in ter- in terms of you know total usage across the country. In San Francisco, it's pretty balanced because they, they both started here. But um, yeah, it, it makes sense in in your market that that would keep you keep you the busiest. Um, so what? Uh, okay, so so it's going well, and that's a re- a remarkable amount of tips you're getting. Um, so that's so that would say to me that e- either adding condiments in your car has helped. Or or opening the door for people. I think the opening the door would have a bigger impact because that's the first thing that they experience from you is you opening the door for them as they as they get in. I'm I'm going to try that. That that's that's interesting. I want to see if that impacts my tips um, where I'm where I'm working. That's a good idea. Um, what 
What is it uh, you most like about it so far? And what is it you, you most dislike about it so far? I guess what I like about it the most is um, meeting new people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's exciting. Yep. Um, you never know. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know who you're going to get in the car. <laughs> you know, yeah. whether they're a big spender, a big tipper, and even if they're not, you know, I'll still shower them mm-hmm. with love. You know, it's all about making it rain for people. And, and believe it or not, a lot of people, whenever you open up your the car for them and you're offering them, you know, a free ice cold water and condiments, they look at me funny like, wow, I, you know, I, I've never had this in an Uber. Really? Yeah. Uh, and it's made it worth its while. Yeah. Uh, what, what's been the most uh, difficult part or part you like the least? The writing. The ratings. Uh, I think it's unfair that we have to rate these people first. Uh-huh. Um, irregardless, I'm going to rate everybody a five. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't know what's going on in someone's life as far as why they would give you a one when you gave them a fresh ice water, some peanuts and some crackers. You open their door. You, you have good conversation with them. You give them the music that they want. Um, and then you get out of the car and you go down the road. Next thing you know, ping, you get a one star. Really? How do you... <laughs> How, how do you know? You, how do you know you got a one star? Because I because I I, I, I I track mine like a hawk. Oh really? Oh you you can see it drops down. Okay. Uh, you know I've I have trips. I have I have never canceled a trip. I, I accept one hundred percent of them. Yeah. Um. I've I've got trips requested three hundred and seventy. Um, I've had 10 people out of that 370 that have declined for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, uh, I think out there in San Francisco, they're really hitting that cush hard because I'm supposed to be going east and the app has me going west. People sometimes see that. Uh huh. They'll, you know, because cush is legal in California. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Sure it is. It's like coffee. Yeah. Oh, it's, so, it's- um, I think they're cushioning it up hard out there because my app sometimes takes a while to configure. Uh-huh. Um, what, uh, what, my, what, uh, are you, what, uh, navigation system are you using? I use the, uh, whatever the Uber is using. Oh, okay. You ought to, um, I would suggest you, you check out Waze. Uh, I use Waze. I find it super, far superior to the, to the Uber, uh, system. Uh, huh. yeah, yeah. I didn't know you could, uh, yeah, it, it, I have a, it, I have a Garmin set up. I got a pole yeah. that comes off my seat yeah, on you the passenger side. I'll have to send you a picture of it. Yeah. You don't, and I've got a Garmin yeah, you don't and need, I've got a platform that they use in police cars uh-huh. and you can put a computer on and I lay my phone out on it. Yeah. And then I use the computer on the, on the vehicle. I use Waze. Mm-hmm. The, the the app and the Garmin. And I use the Garmin, so sometimes if I get in an area and I don't know where I'm at, I can always push to get me back out of that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, know, back on where I want to go. Yeah, well, with the Waze, yeah. So you've used Waze, yeah. I I just yeah, I don't. Uh, I just use the Waze. I don't use any Garmin or anything. I just use one phone, and it's got my Waze app, which integrates with Uber. So you just set that as your navigation. And it'll just when you hit navigate, it'll just kick right up. It'll fire up the ways, and uh, and you're on your way. Interesting. Yeah. So you know, on the on the ratings, I've got 226 five stars, four four, a one three, three twos, and one one, and I'm a four point nine two. All right. Um, I yeah. don't know whether that's good or bad. Well, the the, um, the thing the thing is, it doesn't mean anything. You know, I mean. People obsess about the ratings, but unless you get down to like a four point six, uh, you're, it's not going to affect your 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 job. So I, my mine fluctuates from five. To, I've gone down to four point eight five, and then back up to five. It it just wow. You know, it, they just take the last one hundred rides, 
right? So, so your the rating that you're going to see of you is just based on the last 100 rides. So, at my in my, <laughs> I've got 25,600 rides. My rating is just based on the last 100. You know, it's not based wow. on not based on the whole career. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. That's that's a. Uh, so you don't like the rating? Well, you can't uh, you can't control the passengers. Some of them are just yeah, like you said, they're just having a bad day and they just want to hurt somebody, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let them let them have at it because it really doesn't affect us uh, in the least. So given um, given what you've been through so far for three weeks, so what what are your plans moving forward? Do you do you plan to um, stick with it, keep doing it for a while? Uh, how long do you plan to do it? Well, I am, uh, number one, uh, I use it as a tool, a bridge. You know, I, I'm gainfully employed again mm-hmm. uh, at an awesome job. And what I like about the Uber and the ride share is, is I can get up at four in the morning and I can set my destination for work and I can progress towards work and pick up rides. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I leave here, I can get right back on it. That way I can ride off those miles going to work and from work. It's 70 miles round trip a day. Okay. Um, and I can always use it on the weekends. I'm not, I'm never going to, I I couldn't imagine stop doing it. Yeah. It's fun. Um, it's fun. Yeah. I, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I just wrote an article for the rideshare guy uh, about when, when the condition, when so many drivers are complaining about how bad it is to be a driver, why do drivers continue to drive? And and there's a lot of reasons, you know, and one of them is it's we we like being out there talking to people, being out there on the open road. And uh it's it's stimulating. It's very stimulating. Yeah. I, I agree with well, you. I never got a dollar forty a mile and I never got eighty cents a minute. <laughs> so, you know, when you look at it from that, these guys and now that they're public and the earnings per share come out and they're taking, you know, 21.3 versus 18.2. There's more take. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's, uh, it's hard. It's, who, yeah, it's the context. Yeah. It's the context. So if you look at it, yeah, if you look at how it was five years ago to now, yeah, it's easy to say this really sucks. But for yeah. for somebody who's just starting, you know, they say, well, this is great. I can work for a while, make some money and meet some people and yeah. It's not, it's not such a bad gig. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Today, I mean, in three weeks, I put $4,501 in my pocket. Yeah. In three weeks. You know. In, yeah. That's good. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I've and, got 6,000 miles in there. The tax rod officer there for me. Oh, yeah. Um, Huge I've got a lot of miles in my car. That's one of my, you know. I couldn't imagine doing this full time because I'm very excessive. Yeah. And there's no doubt that I would have a hundred thousand miles on my brand new car in yeah. a year. Well, if you, if you, if you were to go full time like that, you definitely want to lease a car or rent a car through the, uh, the, the fare for Uber car program. Cause then you're, then you can put as many miles on it as you want. My first three years, I did the whole thing in a, in a leased, uh, Toyota, uh, Prius and, uh, and when it was, when I was done, there was like 270,000 miles on it. And I just gave him the car back and that was it. What kind of bonus are you being offered? Are you being offered any kind of bonus for, uh, uh you know, get for the number of trips you do as in no, nothing like that's uh, been offered to you yet. Dallas, they gave us a zone that if we do three consecutive trips, we got a $9 bonus. Yeah. Um, yeah. 950. Yeah. Um, and you know, the surging, Right, you know, you try to you try to get over there to the surge, yeah. and I'd have both apps on, and all of a sudden, ping, you know, one app, my my lift would go off, and I'd lose that eleven dollar surge. And the way Lyft works, you know, Lyft they demand that you take that trip. Oh if yeah, you don't, they send you a message. Hey, you know, if you're tired and all this, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't know you had. I thought I thought it was a uh, an honor system. If you want to honor and take the trip, fine. If you don't, don't hit it. But that ain't the way it works. They want you to take it. Oh yeah, that's that's the whole point of the bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right. Well, 
All right, Paul. Well, it sounds like it's been quite an adventure for you. I, I'm going to ask you the last uh, three questions that I ask everybody on, on my podcast, and uh, and then we can wrap wrap this up. And, and thank you for joining us. You've been uh, an entertaining guest, and uh, I think we, those of us who are seasoned uh, drivers, uh, have all and new drivers, we've all learned something here. All right, final three questions for uh, Paul Pintor. Paul Pintor, what is your favorite movie of all time? My favorite movie of all time. You know, I'd have to say right now, The Chef. The Chef. The Chef with uh, John Favreau. Yes, either that or Wall Street, one or the two. Oh, you know. really? Really different movies there. The Chef. Oh, sure. The Chef is a great movie. It's a buddy movie. It's a romance. Uh, it's a father son movie. It's a food movie. Yeah, I love that movie. I've seen it a it's couple a times. Movie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sofia Vergara is in it. She's freaking awesome, beautiful. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Good answer. All right. What on your on your uh, phone? What pictures do you have on as the wallpaper on your phone? The wallpaper on your phone. Yeah. Uh, you know, just something standard. Uh, a, a dark blue. I don't even have an image on it. It's just dark sky blue. I like blue. Yeah, That's but, God's favorite colors, blue. <laughs> you haven't thought much about it. That's okay. And okay, last question. So uh, Paul Pintor is about to walk into a room, and everyone's watching you walk in. What is your theme song? What is the th- what is the song that you want to be playing when uh, when they announce you in the room? Oh uh, well, you might like this, but it's not "You're So Vain" by Carly uh, Simon. <laughs> That's what that's what you that's your favorite song? No, uh, what would be oh um um can't you see by the Marshall Tucker band? Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that song. Can't you see by Marshall Tucker? Yeah. That's a great song. All right, great. Um well, thanks so much, Paul, for uh, showing up here in the dojo. You've been uh, uh, great to talk to, and I, I think everyone got a lot of value at, out of uh, out of the things you had to say. Thanks for entering the dojo, Paul. Hi, blessings to everybody. All right, Mr. Paul Pintor, that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and uh, teaching this old dog a new trick, the idea of opening the door for the passengers. That just might work. Hey, if you're considering driving or you want to make more money as a driver in San Francisco, be sure to check out my website at rideshareDojo.com and you can click on the master course link. I have 50 videos that I only share in the course. Can't get them on YouTube. If you're thinking about starting an online business, check out my website at nomadj.com. All right, nomadj.com. There's a free book I wrote called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily with Jay Crater. And I share different aspects of life, different things I've learned over 60 years in 35 countries. Uh, it's available wherever you get podcasts. People are really seeming to like it. And uh, what's, what you do is once you subscribe, go to iTunes and subscribe. And then whenever you open up your app in the morning each, each day, your podcast app, the new episode is preloaded and you just click on it. And you got it for a minute. So uh, check it out. Next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I'll do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater. Thanks for entering the dojo. Every Monday and Thursday, I like saying the dojo. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.